and welcome to your favorite show, Identities Um Shobo Shatiri, where we talk about your social, economic, and political issues. Mm -hmm. This week we continue in Matabele Land, where we are talking about resilient farming. Mm -hmm. Studio today, I'm joined by a, a handsome man and a beautiful lady uh, who are about to introduce yourself. Welcome, lady and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Please introduce yourself. I'm Innocent Nyati from the Minister for uh, Agriculture. Thank you very much, Mr. Innocent Nyati. My sister. I'm Mrs. Asula. Thank you very much for, for, for introducing yourself. Uh, so last week we learned a lot mm -hmm. and how farmers are benefiting, especially women, uh, as well as um, the councillors who came on board to talk about this program. But we want to understand how this region has, how this program has benefited the region. Messi, would you like to take us through the, the main components of this program as far as resistance building is concerned and how that has benefited the Matabeleland region. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we've tried very much to build the resilience in communities through various components within our programming. Uh, our main focus or the foundation of all the programming that we're doing mm -hmm. is uh, building communities disaster uh, management capacities. Mm -hmm. uh, they basically need to understand what kind of disasters they are being affected with, how to respond to them and how to plan for them and prevent any eventualities that could be um, disastrous to the community. Um, you want to take us through the kind of ingos is on corner and then please continue. Okay. Um, in Matipele land, uh, the major hazard or ingozi, abati abatlasela kakhulu, mm. i drought. Right. E, amanza nganaya swela gala lapa emkatini, izulu libu ya lingan libe eratik, mm. e, lingabu ingenze la ekatile. E ogunye anga niba kala nga ako iguti gule savu mzani kumbe imoya obu ya ulamanda ama nenga kulu right. so to say eh, nyingati ubaba unyati anga ngeti sanje nge zinye ingozi he's one of our key partners right. she's talking about how um ingozi she's just explained some of them you want to take us through ugoti some of ingozi as kangelana lazula yeah, 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 well, yeah, well, so, uh, we, we have issues to do with what we call flash flooding. Mm. Uh, right. In the valley city, in Ozamkol. Right. At times, we are in Zulu, uh, heavy downpours within a short mm. period of time. Right. And then uh, people's fields are destroyed, their property, their assets are destroyed. You know, we have such kind of scenario. We, we, we also have, uh, we are not only basically looking at the uh, Ingos in the context of a community at Tengazati mm -hmm. We are also looking at the, the road accidents are part of uh, the dis disaster uh, issues that we are looking at mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as, a, as a province. Right. Surely. We also have issues where we lose livestock. Mm -hmm. In the advent of flash floods, we lose also livestock, we lose the irrigation equipment, we lose the balls, especially where we have irrigation schemes that are under, or that are used gliding the water source sense abstraction. Mm. We normally lose such kind of uh, assets. So right. there are a lot of issues that are surrounded around disaster. There are, uh, there are so many, I can't even mention them all. In Elugu and the Leoga tests, um, Oku Benefiti community, Sevens and Yanga, my partners, and the particular in was the Elis Kangelana Lazoku project lay. Oh, okay. L let me pay, maybe give a face or a broader way or classification. We we have what is called the community managed disk reduction, mm -hmm. right? Where we are empowering communities themselves mm. to be the driving force of disasters. We also so, have, of mitigating mitigating disaster. disasters. Okay. Mm -hmm. Surely, mm -hmm. we also have uh, issues to do with the. Uh, uh, livelihood we have diversified mm. the livelihoods right. that we come into into force and assist our communities we also have uh, uh, increased the productivity where we are saying i want to now it's not about production we are saying i want to have a in the way man they should produce ukuza so that it can sustain them for a longer period Right. Those are the issues that we're basically uh, looking at. 
Remember, it disaster. We want to uh, bring them back so mm. that they are sustainable. Right. Yeah, those are our focuses or strategies. Community empowerment. What a community like e empowered this is mess on its own. But you know the traditional ways of looking after themselves. Who project lay sikanga lima tebele land. Who in elugu elugu funda yo guti lani dilogu cha elugu leta yo la go back balako kadewegu yenza all these years. How are you building those bridges? Who guti it traditional the local elugu funda sa yo can actually then sustain communities moving forward? Um, I approach here to I faga I community on the front, forefront right. of yeah. everything that we are doing. Nga si kuluma ngi community managed disaster risk reduction. Si titina, yo na I community ga ibe yo ehle la zonke izindo. So gucho uguti ulu azilonke loluana abalalo. Ilo abalu sevenzi saga kulu. Ego zingwe tise ni pagati wenye lozi sizmele. Ni ngani la umzegele so wuti pagati kwe program yetu besi kaka tega saga kulu ama indigenous knowledge systems a pagati kwe community yetu. Wuti kati ngai drought iko na ba gubo nanja ni slasha zona lezi ezko na ngao kuzagubali ni ingozi etile mta umbeba tila la kunjani ni nje la zabozi sin tu tina sin agazi siban pati sengo loba ilupi umeito. Moving forward beyond this project, so you've got things that you have learned from, things that you are preparing to take forward from this program. You know, communities have knowledge on indigenous technical knowledge. Right. But but as a civil, mm. that is true. Yeah. They have yeah. that yeah. knowledge. But what was lacking was documented that aspect. So we are doing the documentation 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 aspect. So those issues she has a document. And uh, geographically, maybe local ngabe kuko nemtubule no matebele land, ingenye kwabe kungasebenza ingenye mashona land. But this is what information we want to share as a community, as a nation, so that we have that documented. And in future abantu abe to baza kusebenzis. I think kakateki ilu kuti siyabonu kuti Uhulu Mende is part of this program and Uhulu Mende is actually in the middle of documenting the lessons learned for deepening the resilience of communities in, in, in drought response as well as improving farming mechanisms in Matevelelent. Uh, stay with us, we are just taking a break. When we come back, we continue with the conversation. We are working in three districts of Matevelelent, which is Alpani, uh, in Caesar and Mato. Uh, as you know, these districts are in found mostly in natural regions um, four, natural region five, um, and these are characterized by low rainfall. So our work in that is to try to bring in um, some climate, what we call climate smart crops, crops that will uh, survive even when the rain or that will yield even when the rain season is very low. Uh, so in, in this project we have um, brought in two climate climate crop, Amaranthi, which was already being grown by farmers in Zimbabwe but not um, at a large scale, and also a new crop called quinoa, which comes from Bolivia in South America. For Amaranth, we started at the inception of the project in, in August 2017 with the farmers in Matovo, um, and um, we could manage to do about four tons in total, with an average farmer getting uh, about three bags, which is about 150 kgs. Uh, but with quinoa, we, we have started the process of introducing into the country. Uh, we are working with the Department of Research and Specialist Services in the Ministry of Agriculture uh, to do uh, quarantine uh, studies. Uh, now we are at the third stage of the quarantine, after which we will be rolling the crop to the farmers. Um, maybe what is important to know is that these crops are uh, are, are good for the nutrition of the people. Um, for amaranth, it says um, in addition to the starch, it also has um, uh, proteins. Uh, but as for quinoa, 
is one of the most important crops in the world. It's a high-valued crop in terms of um, its uh, availability of uh, proteins and amino acids that are not find, found in other uh, crops. And welcome back to your show, Identity Zoom Shlobo, where we are talking about the program in Matebeleland of Resilience Building, focusing on re risk reduction and enabling farmers to achieve more in their production and access to markets. In the studio, I'm joined by two gentlemen. Gentlemen, would you like to introduce yourselves? Okay, I think I'll do the honors. Right. Given I'm the lighter one in complexion. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, I'm Jusa Zakaria, uh, the acting district administrator for Lupane District, uh, situated in Matebele North. So I'm Diego Matswange, I'm the program manager. Basically working in three districts, so we in Caesar, Matope and Lupane, uh, that's Matopo, Matebele North and South. It's all about uh, creating, res creating resilience, mm -hmm. building resilient communities, so that at the end of the day, communities will say, we are self Reliant. Reliant. Because I was going to come and ask you about that. Uh, why three districts in Matevela land, first of all? And second of all, I understand you have 10 partners working on this program and it's the biggest in the country. Why? When you talk of, when you talk of resilience building, we are mainly looking at three major capacities that we are trying to build. Mm -hmm. We're looking at adaptive capacities, we're looking at absorptive capacities, we're also looking at transformative capacity development. I want you to come back and explain that, but I want this whole work that you're doing with the partners, the government of Zimbabwe, multiple community-based partners, donors. Okay. Mr. D.A., how are you receiving this as the community, as well as the government? Is this something that is acceptable by community? How is it changing the lives of people? Thank you. I think the CMDRR concept is hinged on community participation. What is the CMDRR? CMDRR is Community Managed uh, Dis Disaster Risk Reduction. Right. That's CMDRR. It's commonly, it's, it's, it's hinged on the community participation mm -hmm. and engagement and having an input into the operations of it. It is not the situation where we used to have NGOs being the most active right. in the previous uh, programs, but this is where we have the active participation of the communities and also bring local resolutions or ways to solve their uh, perennial disasters and, and hazards. We are hearing Mr. D.A. about how the government is included, how many donors and community partners are included. As the district administration officer, how is this linking to your own plans for resilience building, for farming plans and, and enabling environment where people can actually say we are benefiting from this? There is no one who can do everything alone. Right. So that's why you find with the concept of integrating uh, knowledge, skills and resources, that's the consortium at the community level, at the district level, okay. but they've got different various stakeholders which have got also their government and policy input into their uh, framework and planning. Why we are doing that is to complement each other. Apart from complementing each other, is also to build sustainability. Mm. Once the project is over, given that's a three-year project, we are able to continue with the functions and the activities that they have been doing in all spheres of operation. Okay. Because all those concepts that they are doing in terms of resilience building focus on these different activities. As an office, we are the coordinator. We mm. make sure we fluidify oh, wow. the functions of these activities. We come in with the arm of traditional leadership structure right. into it and have the communities to partake and participate and input into that. So you find it is bigger in nature in construct and at the same time in performance because all that we are doing, all that they are doing is to do with leaving the communities, building their communities better and at the same time resilient to their local shocks that they are aware of. I do believe as a person who also works in development that this model seems like it's an inclusive model where community yes. is involved, mm -hmm. the government is involved, the donors are involving the government 
that could actually be a model that we want to investigate and say, to what extent is it building sustainability and harmony uh, in our communities in bringing people together? We take a break and when we come back, we're continuing this conversation to say, okay, moving forward, what can we learn? What can we do better? How can we continue the sustainability? Don't go away. With the Meteorological Services Department, we have seen the development of about 57 rain gauges and two automatic weather stations in Incisa and Lupani, respectively. In it, we are trying to raise awareness with the help of the development partner so that the communities can be able to build resilience to climate shocks and especially they having their own indigenous knowledge systems which we want to try and tap and diffuse them with the climate change systems and the disaster risk reduction methods or initiatives that the whole country and the involved uh, other sister departments are involved in. So the communities themselves, especially the women and the children, for which most of the disasters actually fall upon, are actually the most people who are vulnerable and we aim at giving them methods of living beyond the climate shocks. In so doing, we are now trying to educate the men that they should also give opportunities for women to have a better stake in uh, the means of survival, like fields, uh, livestock, so that they can manage uh, putting up small grains, uh, keeping up small livestock and the other that would actually make the communities survive. Welcome back to your show Identity Zone Global where we continue in Matevela Land where we talk about uh, the resilient building that's going on in terms of farmers as well as um, about climate management. I have two gentlemen in the studio helping us to understand this. Uh, before we went on the break, Mr. D, you had mentioned three components of this program. Would you yeah, like to yeah, take us yeah. through that? These are capacities. Let me try to unpack them um, mm -hmm. so that they are, they, are, they are more clearer. So we are, we are talking about absorptive, we are talking about adaptive and the transformative capacity development. These mm -hmm. are capacities that are critical for resilience building in a community, household level, and also at individual level. In a nutshell, we are looking at um, community minor disaster risk reduction component, where communities are able to identify their shocks and being able to come up with the response mechanisms. That's critical. Secondly, we are looking at increasing productivity could be um, in the levels of component, which is critical and multivalent, could be in the crop sector, where you're also promoting small grains and other crops that we talked about earlier on, right? It could be other infrastructure that we can mention, like deep tank rehabilitation, dam rehabilitation, irrigation, that are also critical to enable communities to bounce back when there is a, a disaster. Then we're also looking at diversifying levels, where we are also trying to link up coming to the different markets and also being able to diversify in whatever they are doing, which you is critical. Do you want to give us um, maybe simple examples of when you're talking about the three components, like you spoke about adaption and, um, and the other two, because those are big words. How, what do they mean? To all mama la bovava, we're watching you right at the, now. At the community level, we're looking at, when, when we talk of adaptive components, we're looking mm -hmm. at irrigation. Okay. We are looking at uh, even dam rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. We are also looking at even the bore rehabilitation right. where people can then use that water mm. productively to produce. So right. that when a disaster comes or a mm. shock is, uh, is, is probably, Ingoes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. whatever, then what happens, the community is better able to adapt to that changing environment. That, that's, that's critical. But when you're looking at the transformative capacity development, which is also going to talk about mm -hmm. in terms of policy, right. we are trying to create an urban environment uh, in an enabling environment for communities to uh, to work for us or to work even for policies to come in and get influenced within the program. What, to what ex extent has this program changed policy in the, within the government structures? 
I think it's not merely changing only, but mm -hmm. I think it's also conforming to the Constitution. Right. If you go to the Constitution, it talks about devolution. Mm. So if you look at the, before the Constitution was crafted, there was an issue of centralized planning, centralized decision making. So was the issue of disaster response. So this community participation approach is, is decentralizing response mechanism, decentralizing response um, action from the central to the, to, the, to the local level. What we also have done through the program is also to critique the National Civil Protection Act to say how best can it be operationalized so that it is not centralized in terms of reaction, but also comes to the ground and every stakeholder participate in that. Apart from that, the, the Let me just reduce that mm. to the... Oh, mama, no, 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 no. So what it's simply saying is that it has been reduced to, for us, who come up with solutions. Thank you. Who, because we are the most affected. We are being empowered to make our own decisions. So we will respond when things happen to us. Please go ahead. Thank you. You actually took all my words <laughs> because we are saying through yeah. the devolution and the decentralization of decision making and yes. and in law in decentralization, <laughs> <laughs> so we need. <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying is the yeah. process that has happened to yes. enable the community participation. And everything mm -hmm. we have in a way empowered them right. to be self reliant, to mm. be self self standing, and to make their own. Um, decisions and influence their development. Right. Apart from that, the program also has brought in the issue of capacitating uh, government departments in terms of training, right. in terms of CMD, RRR, community-based management, in terms of disaster risk management. And we've also brought in the issue of disaster mapping in departments. It has also brought in the issue of equipping uh, departments in terms of ICT and, and other resources mm -hmm. that are critical. The program also has brought in a component that we have always been missing in development, an integrated approach to develop these districts and these communities so that there is no competing over the same community, over the same resources, over the same issues. Mm. So the coming in of the teams or the departments and the communities has created a plus for the program. How did the community respond? Mm -hmm. I think if you go into our numbers, the program has touched lives to almost 30,000. Wow. People plus. Uh, that is very positive and the participation is not by any attraction, but merely people seeing this is a way to go. Mm. We are empowered. So is the traditional structures that have also accepted such uh, achievement. And I think we are on the right track. I, I am hearing that part of this is what it has capacitated U.S. government in terms of strengthening your systems, uh, in terms of being prepared. And I think I think one of the key things that usually happens is uh, beyond a program. Mr. D, how what kind of programs? What has been the achievements of mm -hmm. this program? Let me just take you uh, through some key achievements of the program mm -hmm. so far over the uh, the last eighteen months. Mm -hmm. There are quite a number, but I'll just mention the key ones. We are talking of um, 33,000 households in the three districts being reached through different and um, well-sequenced, appropriately um, uh, layered activities. Looking at dam rehabilitation, uh, we are looking at in, in Matopo, one, one dam is rehabilitated, mm. another one in Caesar, and also working one in Lupane, uh, that's, that's massive work uh, being done in the communities. Wow. And that's also going to result in irrigation systems being um, developed and farmers are going to be working. We are talking also, also promoting high value cropping in those irrigation systems so that farmers can also benefit a lot from that. We're also looking at um, uh, the levels of component where we have done quite a number of um, uh, activities that include um, finishing posts where farmers now can pull their livestock together, uh, fitting them, then send them to the market and get prices that are a little bit more lucrative than when we send them directly from your own crawl, right? That's what has been happening. We are looking at bore rehabilitation issues. More than 30 bores have been drilled and solarized, and communities are now able to uh, table their water so easily mm. when, when you come back to the, uh, maybe the, the previous uh, experience. Right. We are also looking at um, uh, mushroom production, linkage to different markets. We have also um, identified quite a number of uh, private sector components mm. that we are also working with. Uh, these are markets. Some, some of them 
uh, being uh, off-takers of our products, some of them even produce, uh, providing uh, inputs of our communities. And the communities are also willing to contribute. That's mm -hmm. why we are talking of resilience, because communities wow. also contribute to their own uh, a, a development on their own. So as we end this amazing program, what are your parting shots, Mr. DA? I think the collaborative effort is critical in ensuring that the country is resilient. Mm. I would also want to appreciate and be thankful to the consortium mm. and the funders there and the government of Zimbabwe to allow this to be fluidified. And of importance is the participation of our people, apart from disaster resilience and building back, but also into economic activities to ensure that they are a nation that can resist any shocks from natural shocks mm. to economic shocks. Wow, great. Thank you, Mr. D. I cannot emphasize, overemphasize um, the support that we are getting from government. It's uh, overwhelming. We are getting lots of support from government partners and also even from our partners. But I can't leave the community because what I am seeing now is the, com is the program grows. The communities are also showing uh, some indication of resilience. Wow, I, I think that uh, we can't overemphasize the need for synergies, the need for holistic programming, and we have been we have been learning about this in material that has been focused on resilience building in our country. So until next time from us at Identities, goodbye. <laughs>